Welcome back. All right, so uh, a entertainment guy video for all you fine people today. I want to talk about influencers, influencing, and and my position as I, I don't think of myself as an influencer, but by the standards of what an influencer is, I guess that's what part of being a YouTuber is qualified as, is you're an influencer. And I, so at any rate, I guess today I'm influencing Halloween. This is a shirt that was made by, uh, it's, it's a Disneyland shirt. I liked it very much while I was at the park, liked it enough that my wife picked it up for me. Funny thing is, I'd been waiting for it to go on sale because I didn't know she bought it while we were down there. And I had actually got set to order it when she stepped in and said, don't, don't order that. And I was like, okay, there's only one reason you wouldn't want me to order it. You already bought it for me. I am the king of ruining presents. Um, it's, it's not the first time that that's happened either. Also, um, I bought something for her and then found out that she had actually bought the exact same thing for me basically a week before I bought that for her. So, and it's just a nice little charm that, that'll go on a tree somewhere. I mean, mine's Christmassy, hers isn't. And then all it says is, uh, of all the weird things I've found online, you're by far my favorite. So when you get these ads online for these little custom made things, well, we click on those ads and we actually buy stuff. Now, getting back to the topic at hand. On July 19th of 2020, I did a video on YouTube versus a real job. I really hope I don't repeat myself in this video. I'm going to try not to. March 23rd of 2020, when everybody's at home, because that's March of 2020, I did a video for anyone starting a new channel because everybody was going to start a YouTube channel because everybody was home from work or from school. So it seemed like the right time. Now, um, being an influencer is a very popular choice for job. And it feels like it's popular now in the way that when I was a kid, everybody wanted to be an astronaut. Um, everybody wanted to be a, a professional athlete, right? And certainly there are a lot of people who'd like to be professional athletes. Um, the work that's involved in becoming a professional athlete may or may not interest them. In some cases it might. In some cases it might be, well, no, I don't want to, I just want to get to the part where I'm rich and rolling around in money. And, and having, you know, beach parties every night. But, um, you know, starting out within, as an influencer, it's tough. And so seeing that now they have a, a degree for influencers at various universities, I thought, you know, um, I've been called a professor a few times, so here I am. Uh, and I, I, I look at the price of, of, of the, the degrees that they're offering for influencer, and I would hope, I would hope that it's not just, um, well, fluff, for lack of a better terminology. Uh, it, it is interesting, too, because I, I think there's a streamlining with influencers that I've, I've resisted the whole way through. So as the channel grew, I had modest goals for the channel as it was growing. I really didn't worry about it. And I'm talking the main channel, which is the hockey guy, with thus the, the hockey stuff in the background. And, and I consider this channel, the entertainment guy, to be the hobby. All right, so the main channel is the hockey guy, that's where, you know, it's all the the really, really uh, more serious in terms of how I view it and in terms of how I view its numbers. This channel, like if I put a video out on this channel, I know it's probably not going to do very well. Um, the If I'm going to talk about Doctor Who, I'm not going to get much of an audience. Doctor Who was where I tried to start before I had hockey videos on the other channel and just didn't click, which is fine. And being able to pivot is important. So if you're putting out content and you're like, I really love this content, and then you put out some other content and that content performs way better, you have to be ready to pivot, right? Um, so the YouTube versus a real job, I've talked about it. The difference between a, you know, a real nine to five job and YouTube is, so you go to work, you do your job from nine to five, that's standard way of describing it, although very few people work from nine in the morning till five in the afternoon anymore. At least it doesn't seem that way. Um, but the, the reality is that when you are an influencer, you are employed by yourself. So, uh, the money you make and how it's spent and all of the other fun stuff that's on you. And so, uh, when I see, and I know I've talked to people who may not be as motivated, who'll be like, yeah, I haven't really figured out what I want to be. Maybe I'll be a YouTuber. And it's like, um, you can, you can, you can make a video, you can upload it. And you're a YouTuber, done. But if you want to be a YouTuber that actually has an income and a following, it it, it does get a little more difficult. Um, there's certainly, I think, a, a personality type that can work on YouTube. I have no idea how it worked for me. Uh, I do think, and I've mentioned this before, that there's a benefit to me in being older. That 
um, not being, you know, 15, 16, 17 and starting a YouTube channel. I think there's a benefit to me being older and starting one. Um, it, it, it just, it gives me a different perspective. And when I see these reports of, of people on YouTube making a lot of money and then blowing it all. And I took 10 friends down to Barbados and spent all this and I'm like, what are you, what are you doing? Especially when I look at their numbers. So I look at their numbers on various uh, sites that analyze channel numbers and I'm thinking, they don't make that much more than I do. What in the hell are they thinking? Like you're, you're taking all of your monthly income and, and rather than thinking about, you know, retirement, it's never too, weird, too early to start about that. You're, you're spending this money as fast as it's coming in. That does not work. You can't do that. You have to be ready. You have to, you have to have your RSPs. You have to have, make sure you've got all your medical and dental and everything covered. Make sure all your bills are paid. Make sure the rent's paid. If you've got a mortgage, make sure, make sure you've got all that paid first. And then if you have fun money and you want to take friends on a holiday, okay, but they just, they blow through it. And the other assumption they make too is that the income is going to keep going like that. I've never made that assumption. Um, both times when we've moved since the channel got bigger, uh, in both cases, I didn't move until we were making well enough money for me to be able to afford where we were moving to. So if we were going to move to a house where let's say the rent was $1,000. I would not be comfortable moving into that house until I was making over $2,000. Now, here, you're lucky to get a studio apartment for $1,000. I'm just using that as a number. I want to make sure the channel's making enough money that in the event that things get slow, income drops, I don't have to worry. Whereas I see some of these people, and again, I think it's just, it's, it's youthful, it's excitement, it's this I'm rich, I'm famous kind of idea. And they, they blow through it, and I, I do think inexperience is part of that. Although, I don't know if I'd been able to do it as a teenager if I would have done it either, because I was really, really boring as a teenager. I was I was very much, um, I mean, I still would have been all gung-ho about buying hockey jerseys, but would I have traveled? Probably not. Um, I and, and just, yeah, I, I don't think I would have, but maybe I'm just wired a little different. So the modest goals throughout the build were important. And I think that works for anybody coming into social media or, or influencing any of that. I think modest goals are important. Um, and, and if you see exponential growth from March till April on whatever you're on, whether it's Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, whatever it is, do not assume that it's going to keep going exponentially. It does not work that way. There's months on the main channel where I might get 8,000 subscribers. I will not get 8,000 the following month. I might get 2,000, I might get 1,500, I might get 800. I, that's the thing, you have to just look at where your numbers are and just assume they should stay relatively the same and make sure you've got enough of a cushion so if they drop, you're, in, you're okay. You're not gonna be stressing about it. The most important thing I think for anybody who's doing the influencing thing is have a vision from the start and stick to it. Just stick to it. And when all the negativity comes in, block that out as best you can there are there are times where people will label something as constructive criticism that isn't they're like oh that's just constructive criticism it's not um yeah that's there there are times where it's just flat out insults left right and center and then they're like i'm just giving you constructive criticism there is that's destructive criticism there's nothing constructive there so that's that's something that's really important, but I think maintaining the vision is important. So giving examples from my channel. So you notice shadows right down here having a nap. Um, I was told early on, you can't have cats in your videos. That's just, that's not professional. And you need to make sure you have a green screen and you have like all these projections. And basically what happens is people are like, okay, I'm looking at this channel. It should be the same as all the other channels I watch on YouTube. The All the channels need to be the same. And, and that's how I took it. And I was thinking to myself, you know what? No, I, I, I don't want to do that. There are certain videos I do on the hockey channel that um, I have considered hiring an editor uh, to, to, to punch them up a little bit. But if, if it's something I'm gonna do, it's gonna be something that I do organically. So it would have to be a situation where I'm talking to somebody and it, it comes up in, 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 in conversation and uh, it would have to be somebody who lives close by. It'd have to be somebody that I know, somebody that I trust. And so the odds of that happening, 
not that high. I'm not going to just, you know, put out an, an ad online and then deal with all the other fun stuff that can come along with then I'm somebody's boss and then just the dynamic of everything kind of becomes different and I'm 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 I really do like the way that the channel is is right now. Both channels are right now. Again, as I said, this one is more of the hobby, right? So if I don't get a channel uploaded on the Entertainment Guy that day, that's okay. If I don't get a video done on the Hockey Channel, I'm going to have a lot of questions, a lot of people messaging me, and a lot of what's wrong with THG, where is he? He's supposed to be on here. So, because I've seen that, there's there's one day where I I posted late because I'd had all of my wisdom teeth out the, <laughs> the day before, and uh, I, I had to I had to go on and, and try to make videos while I still had cotton balls in my mouth. That was fun. Uh, but at any rate, um, yeah. And, and then there was one day too where I'd had the flu and I had to go on and say, look, I'm really sick. Please stop messaging. But <laughs> when you post every day, that's what's going to happen, right? Um, so it, it is it is something I keep in mind. And of course, when I go on holiday, I pre-record videos now which makes things a little bit easier. So one thing I wanted to mention here too, and I, I know I've mentioned this in other videos, but again, this is over three years ago, so I don't expect people to necessarily hunt these down or find them organically, because most of your content will get viewed in the first 48 hours. After that, it's kind of tumbleweeds. Uh, I talked to even my YouTube rep about that a couple months ago, and she's like, yeah, yeah, the, the evergreen idea, it sounds great. It's really not a thing on YouTube. It's what have you done lately? Uh, but being yourself is really, really important. And the, the the reality is that not everybody has an engaging personality for camera. Not everybody has an engaging personality uh, for podcast content, which everybody has a podcast. Everybody. All of them. I, I swear, you could go into almost any classroom in North America and say, who has a podcast? And I swear, almost every arm would probably shoot up, uh, which is why I really haven't worried about mine, because I look at it from a realistic point of view. There's a certain amount of ad revenue to go around. If everybody's doing the same thing, there's not going to be a lot of ad revenue for everybody. It's sort of like this idea of, well, Twitter's going to pay for all these impressions. Yeah, but uh, they pick and choose who gets the money. And uh, if everybody jumps on that bandwagon, there's not going to be nearly as much ad revenue to go around there either. But at any rate, that's a whole other discussion. But being yourself is really important because you can tell when people aren't being real. I talked about wrestling before. You can tell when a wrestler's not being true to themselves. You can tell when a wrestler's in a gimmick that just does not suit them. And then you see them and they cut a promo and you go, that's it. That's it. That's them. That's what's going to make them a star. That's the character. That's what's going to work. Uh, the Rock famously was Rocky Maivia, happy and, and dancing around and all kinds of just ridiculous outfits. And then when he became The Rock and he was just kind of a smart ass and... and he simplified his mood, his move set, and uh, you know the rock bottom came in, and yeah, uh, right away it just meteoric rise to success. Even though he became a bad guy to do that, very quickly the fans weren't booing him anymore. Very quickly the die Rocky die chance went away because he was being himself. It was an amped up version of himself, but he was being himself. And so for people who are you know thinking about the whole social media thing and the the influencer thing, being yourself is really really important. As we've seen with YouTubers, even some of the bigger YouTubers, when they're themselves, they're still kind of pricks. But, happens. Apologies for language, but I don't know any other word that describes it better than that. I guess dingus works as well. But it, it's true. Uh, the one piece of advice, and I've got it on the board here, is keep the personal stuff to a minimum. So the, the trick, too, with, with having a channel and as you watch it grow is that you all of a sudden can't talk so much about I go to this store, I hang out here, I do this, um, you know, we do this. Because again, um, there's a certain amount of, of privacy that I, I think you've got to maintain as an influencer. There's that divide. Uh, and so that's that's really important to me is having that divide between my personal life and the channel. And so while people know who my wife is, and you may have seen, you know, my, my stepkids in videos, if you've been a fan of my regular channel long enough, uh, you would have seen my son in videos from way, way, way back when. But the reality is that I, I keep the personal stuff as an aside because, again, you know, there's a professional atmosphere you have to have with your, with your content. And you have to be able to keep those two things separate, your your personal life and then being a YouTuber. Which in the beginning, 
you know, I, I never thought this was going to happen. I was a man in my 40s and thought, eh, whatever. Um, I'm just going to do a bunch of videos and that's that. Um, I always saw making YouTube videos as a way to kind of... Immortal is the wrong term, but think of it this way. Um, how many how many people do we know who are um, who were in TV, movies, music, who have passed, and we still know the things they've done, the things they've said? And I thought to myself, you know, if if there was some part of me that lives on after I'm not here anymore, that would that would be ideal because. And I've mentioned this in other videos. I had watched my father, and this is as close to personal as I get. My father passed. He didn't have any social media. Definitely no videos of him or pictures of him. And so, you know, he was just gone. And I thought that's really kind of sad that he is he is passed and there's no, you know, nothing there. Uh, definitely if this channel had blown up when my dad was in my life, my dad would have been in hockey videos with me. I think my dad and I talking about hockey would have been highly entertaining because he was a big Montreal fan. I like Boston. And I think we could have just done a video on... The fact that when I was a kid, I would sing the Star Spangled Banner just in part to drive him crazy. <laughs> and I think that would have been an entertaining video to make because uh, I remember he he had the, he because he kept saying, you can't cheer for an American team because you're Canadian. And I said, I can cheer for an American. I know the American National Anthem. And so I started singing it. And then my mother joined in. She started singing along too. So it was it was funny. We knew the whole Star Spangled Banner. So if you're American and you don't know old Canada, I get it. But we we do most. I think most Canadians know the whole Star Spangled Banner. We can sing along to it, as has been proven with hockey games. Uh, but yeah, so that kind of stuff. It's a shame that I I didn't have uh, the online presence earlier in my life. But at the point in time where my dad could dad and I could have done that, there wasn't an internet yet, which again is part of the reason why I really appreciate appreciate being able to do this every day. Really appreciate people are willing to tune in and watch my videos every day. Uh, because without you watching these videos, I'm not here doing this. So I am very grateful. I do remember a time when there wouldn't have been any such thing as a social media influencer, where there was no such thing as social media at all. Um, our social media was going out and playing with the kids and then coming in and and talking to our parents about which kid in the neighborhood neighborhood did something stupid and ended up bleeding and what happened and all that fun stuff. Um, sometimes with lawn darts. Sometimes. Sometimes with lawn darts. Um, not always, though. Sometimes it was the street hockey injury. But usually some kid would get hurt and that would end it. Uh, there were times where I'd go out to play and be like, All right, I don't know who's going to get hurt. I don't know how long this is going to last, but we're going to try. That's as close to social anything as it got. And the media part would be me coming in and talking to my parents who then fan out and talk to the rest of the neighborhood about whatever happened that day. So, um, of course, now that would all get amplified on the internet and everybody be taking pictures. And anyways, uh, it is it is a different world. It is a completely different world. I appreciate this world that I live in because, again, you know, uh, the success of the main channel has been great. I do consider this channel to have been a success as well. But I'm, I'm well aware that the entertainment guy is never going to have the same level of subscribers as the hockey guy. And so when I wake up in the morning, the primary concern I have is which hockey videos do I make today and, and trying not to tread down the same path. So like, for instance, there's three different ideas I had today and I could do a video on this team. I could do a video on this and, and I, I immediately scoured the channel and I'm like, I've talked about similar topics way too recently. I'm just going to be treading down the exact same path, which some channels do. I've seen some channels that every day it's very, very remarkably similar, the video content. Um, and we're not talking like news. News, obviously, you're going to have some storylines that are playing their way out. But just there are some channels that I, I look at some of their content and I think, didn't you guys do that video last week? And then I look and I'm like, yeah, you did a video last week that is very, very close. And so I do my best not to do that. And there have been times where I've I've missed the mark on that, but I always sort of own up to it and I, I apologize and move along. But anyways, there you go. If this has helped anybody who's even considering getting into social media, great. Uh, but again, approach it as if it's going to be a hobby. That's why I'm kind of terrified to hear this has become a college course, university course. Because to me, it's something you start out with as a hobby. unless Unless you're being hired by a company. Unless you're being hired by a sports team or being hired by some kind of media entity 
to come in and do social media work with them and, and that kind of thing. But you're going to have a cap on your earnings there. You're working for another person as well. You're going to have deadlines. I don't know. And, and then the job security isn't going to be there either because everybody wants your job. Uh, the one thing I've always said, the difference between this job and previous jobs I had, nobody wanted my job before. Um, if, if I went into my job and this is at the old meat packing plant, obviously all the stuff gets thrown into totes and it gets thrown down a belt. Uh, there's a scale at the end of that belt. You weigh everything off and you send it all into the back. The scale, you have to be really, really fast on that scale. You might have to weigh 800 different totes in a two hour period. Those totes can all weigh uh, upwards of about 20 kilos, about 40, 50 pounds. And so it can be tough, especially if it gets really backed up and you're trying to pull a tote out of the middle of the line without having a bunch of crap falling all over the floor. Um, so if I walked in and said, I want to do the scale today, nobody said, oh, oh, come on, no, I'll do it instead. No, that was my job. And I would do it for a full eight hours because nobody else wanted to do it. No one wanted to do that job at all, period. There were times where I'd sign up for overtime because I knew that's where they'd throw me. And so I'd have 10 hours at that scale doing the exact same thing all day, which um, I don't think labor laws would allow that. But anyways, um, you're supposed to change jobs. You're not. That's how repetitive stress injuries occur. First aid attendant and all, not setting a good example. But the difference as a YouTuber is, is if I say, well, I don't want to do that, there are a million other people who say, I'll do it. And so that's the trick, is keeping in mind that it is, it is a job that is in very high demand. And I think that means that we're, we're not going to see the kind of job security um, for, and again, if you're employed by a company, um, that, that job security, a little bit dodgy, I would think. But let me know your thoughts in the comment section below as always. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just happened upon this video. Thank you guys so much for all your support because again, without your support, I'm not in here. I'm not making these videos. I can't do this. And uh, that, would, that would really and truly be sad. Although if I'd never done this, I would never have known. But thank you guys so much for all your support. I will talk to you again soon.